inside the palm up to elbow level and look at your nail and you cannot see your nail anymore any feeding you do is a waste now fish farming is profitable because you can convert one kg of food into one kg of flesh that's anything from 300 naira to 700 naira to one kg of flesh yourself any from 700 to 1005 per fish now the moment the water you cannot see your nail that means the algae is concentrated and by the way you know that algae they do one thing at night they they respire that means they to consume oxygen and release carbon dioxide oh my god and that's at night time that your fish wants to go ahead and convert the food to flesh so you're expensive food how would this guy be able to convert because another person is converting with that conversion factor and those are the algae that were beneficial in the afternoon how can you cut them off so before you know it, your one kg food that was costing you about 500 naira per, per feed or maybe 300 to 600 In fact, food is getting more expensive, but I, I always tell my customers, you're going to make your own food. Now, let's say your food bill is about 300 to 500 naira. Now, one kg food will go in and you sell your fee for about 700 to 1,000. Oh, good profits, right? But then the moment the high issue comes in, you might end up the commercial factor will be reduced. It will now be 2 kg in for 1 kg out. That's 1,000 naira food in. And they are selling your fee for 900, 1000. So, what are you doing? You are playing games. It's all up to you. Make efforts to roof your pond. Is that okay? And when you are roofing, don't build a cathedral. Right? Make it easy that when somebody stands on that, it's not going to bump in his head. That's why you see me wear cap all the time. My head is balding, but then I need a cap so that I won't have bumps all over my head. Especially in farms. So, make sure you roof in such a way that people can pass under. And then you can even have your irritating materials come down easily. So that's one of the major reasons. Apart from doing that, you have to shade. Why? Because the catfishes don't trust you. You know that now. That your love for the catfish is fake love. <laughs> you keep feeding them every day. They know you feed them in the morning. You feed them sometimes in the afternoon. I even come back at night to feed them. Month one, month two, month three, even month four. What a love. <laughs> Just like you feed your kids at home. But one day... You won't do that for your family members. You do that to the fish. You betray them to the market women. They sell them straight to the slaughter, to the gulag. So they know that your love is fake. So they're always conscious of that when they want to take food from you. And what actually makes them to be much more afraid is when they see sunlight direct. So the darker the environment, the better the trust between you and the fish. So they grow big. They are not afraid. They are not secret some pheromones to inhibit the growth of other members of the population. You are happy. No, they are happy. And then you are happy too because they are growing faster. Trust is there between. And you know, Stephen Covey in his book. <laughs> the speed of trust. So if you want speed of growth, <laughs> apologies Stephen Covey, then make sure that you create a trust environment for your fish. That's the reason of the shade. So I think best customer is going to shade his pond. That's number two. Now with that, because cost of food is high, it's good to do what they call aeration system. And again, you know that with Mr. Fish all along. And what does aeration do? I've said this again and again in so many of my videos. Now, you are interested in making profits in this project, isn't it? Now, the profit comes from the fish you sell. Now, it's the flesh of the fish that actually makes the money, right? And that flesh is protein. Now, protein is made up of what we call amino acids. Now, the building block of amino acid is carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Now, the breakdown of all the food you ever give them, whether imported or local or thereabout, is carbon hydrate. Now, nitrogen, after conversion, is there in the atmosphere. You know primary school something, that 78% of the year is nitrogen. But after some conversion, right in the water, it's available. Then the oxygen is now the critical factor. Me and you were breathing in 21% oxygen. I mean, Sunday, I remember... Uh, primary three, I mean, uh, 21 percent oxygen. I hope I'm right. I left primary school now in 1975. So, pardon me if I don't get the percentage right now. Nitrogen is not percent, but inside water, the oxygen is eight percent. Now, it gets really bad once you leave water in a bucket for about two days or thereabout. Without even fish inside, though, you go now after this video and put your hand in the bucket and try and scrub the body of the bucket inside, you see your hand is slimy. If you go put your hand under a microscope, you will wash your remain to amputate your hands. 
Why? Because of the billions of bacteria that settle in here. Now, if you have a dissolved oximeter to test the water inside, to test, to test the water, the oxygen inside the water, you know what you're going to get? 0 0.001%. Oh my God, you've got the you've got the best food in the world. Kopensala, oh, I just mentioned them. Whatever it is, I get bioma. I just mentioned them. now nitrogen is available. Now oxygen is now zero point zero zero one percent. So you have what they call incomplete anabolic activity, which cannot convert that one kg food to one kg flesh. And this is seventy percent of your cost, even getting to ninety percent now. Does it make sense not to aerate, it, even if it's just one hour a day? Because one, apart from the fact that it's giving you ox, I mean, it's making the food to be converted appropriately, it's doing four wonderful things too that are different, that, that are potentially beneficial to the fish. Number one, I'll call it number two, is removing the carbon dioxide from the water. Carbon dioxide efficiency that actually comes from the bowl water. Number three, is removing the ammonia from the urine. That's why you hear that urine like smell in farms that they don't have. So cartridge has to come up and down non-stop to, to make the ammonia come up the water. I pick a pardon, save them the hassle. Let them rest in the water comfortably. Is that okay? Except when they want to come and gulp some here from the abortion again. But if there's uh, ammonia in the water, they keep coming up regularly. Can you imagine one cartridge moving 350 meters, meters in a day in the pond? They are not, you're not, you're not training for Olympic, <laughs> Olympic Games. <laughs> that we slender and all that stuff to be able to run more. No, you want them for fat. So make life comfortable for them. Let something take up their money on their behalf. Mm. And then finally, you still have uh, what's it called? Uh, I took coming out there. I took about money now. And then which other one again? Can I, can I, can I, uh, okay, I've talked about uh, the, uh, the 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 what's it called? The feed conversion issue. I've talked about the ammonia. I've talked about the uh, the oxygen. The, the, oh, the last one, hydrogen sulfide. Oh yeah. Fishes don't eat the food 100%. There will be at least 10% wastage inside the water. Right? And when you have 10% wastage, <laughs> that decays in the water, consuming oxygen, first of all. Then, two, it begins to give you that foul, rotten egg smell. That's when you lower water, you see blackish stuff at the bottom. That's aggregate sulfur. That's a nice smell. You know, when you fart. <laughs> you don't know what they call hydrogen sulfide. <laughs> now, that's not a nice smell. That's why they say don't build farms around built temporary. Look at it. This place is built up. Right? So, you've got to be careful. So, when you aerate, there will not be built up hydrogen sulfide because it could be evaporated as two. Once the air tone is close, about two inches to the bottom, it takes off the hydrogen sulfide because they won't build up in the first instance. For those of you who are not going to aerate, I hope you know Mr. Fisher of Abusta is there. The colony of probiotics to really help. I'll tell them to use this farm too. So that is enough reasons for you to know that you've got to roof, you've got to shade, and you've got to aerate. Okay, I'll go to the next things they need to do to 